It's Tuesday, everyone. You know what that means. It's two minute tech Tuesdays time. Every week we cover an aspect of Varnish and I present it to you in two minutes or less. Welcome, my name is Thais. I'm the technical evangelist at Varnish Software. And in this video, I'll show you how to install Varnish. But if you've seen last week's episode, you know that we already covered that last week. Last week, I showed you how to install Varnish on an Ubuntu or Debian system. Whereas this week, we'll focus on CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux installations. And you may be aware of that if you've seen last week's video that we won't be just installing any version of Varnish. We'll focus specifically on Varnish Cache 6.0 LTS. And as that name indicates, it is the long-term supported and stable version of Varnish. It's open source like any other version of Varnish Cache, but the difference is that it's not maintained by the open source community, but maintained by us, by Varnish Software. We provide frequent bug fixes and also do feature backports from the upstream version. So allow me to explain in two minutes or less how to install Varnish on a CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux system. And as usual, I put two minutes on the timer and uh, yeah, let's follow along. If you're planning to install Varnish on a CentOS version 8 system or a Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 8 system, please run the following command to disable the local Varnish module. In the next step, we will source the etc OS release file, which will make some operating system related variables available, which we'll use in one of the next steps. If you're using CentOS, please install the EPEL releases packages using this command because it will make dependencies available required by the Varnish installation. However, if you're using Red Hat Enterprise Linux, the EPEL release package won't be available locally. So you need to fetch it from a remote RPM package of which the endpoint contains a version ID string. And that one represents the version of your operating system. So if you're using Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 or CentOS 8, this will be the value. Now it's time to register the package repository. And we do this by adding the following configuration to a specific repo file that is read by the yum package manager. And it contains the URL of our package repository, which in its turn has some variables that need to be parsed. So in the end for, for example, a 64 bit x86 system running on enterprise Linux eight, this would be the string. Once we have the location of our package repository in order, and once the yum package manager is aware of that, it's simply a matter of calling yum install varnish to install varnish with all its dependencies. Even though we've installed varnish, our work is not done yet. We need to do some configuration. And the first step is enabling the systemd service for varnish. And that assures that varnish automatically gets restarted after a server reboot. After enabling the systemd service for varnish, we now want to edit it. And we do this through systemctl edit, minus minus full varnish. An editor will open and it will present us the full service. It also contains the varnish D runtime parameters and that's the reason why we do this. We wanna modify some of those parameters. We wanna change the listening port from 6081 to 80 and we wanna upgrade the allocated memory from 256 megabytes to two gigabytes. After performing these changes, save the file, exit the editor and your configuration is set. The only thing we need to do now is call sudo systemctl restart varnish and we're good to go. Thanks for watching. You now know how to install Varnish on CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And if you watched last week's video, you now also know how to do it on Debian and Ubuntu. Again, thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with more tech on a Tuesday presented to you in two minutes or less.